Hello and welcome back to Azure Terraformer. Today I'm coming to you live from the Pops the Pop I'm coming to you live from the Pop Century Resort in Walt Disney World, Orlando, Florida. Um, no, I'm not here for work. Uh, yes, I'm here for pleasure. And uh, we're just wrapping up a week here at uh, Disney World and man do my feet hurt, let me tell you. Um, so I'm happy to be back here uh, working with you guys on some Terraform. Today I'm going to be talking about a little helpful hint for some edge cases when working with the Azure RM provider um, using some of the utility resources or data sources in this case um, that are going to help you um, solve problems when you're when you're trying to do access different things within the Azure environment that you may not have full information on. Maybe you didn't provision it yourself. Maybe um, you know. Maybe it's in a different subscription or a different uh, group that you that you've accessed that you need to access it from. Uh, but this uh, this little uh, hint will help you uh, access all those resources when you need them. Um, in the provider, there is a resource called um, Azure RM Resources, and it's actually a data source. But this data source um, is a utility data source that lets you look up any existing resource through a number of different ways. You can look up um, using the resource group name, the name, any tags that you've attached to that resource. Um, and so it helps you triangulate one or more matching resources. So it's important the way you construct the the input parameters to this resource is going to result in either exactly one or a multitude of resources that come back. So looking at the documentation we we can the we must pass at least one of the following either the name of the resource um, the resource group that it lives in or the type. Now this is the Azure resource type. Um, so if we're looking up a key vault, it'll be Microsoft.keyvault slash vaults. So all Azure resources have a resource type, and there's a namespace, which is in capitals, Microsoft dot something, uh, virtual networks or compute or key vaults. And then there's a sub resource type, which is followed it by a slash and then something else. Um, so those are the important things. Um, you can also pass in a tag and then what it's going to spit out is a block of resources that contain that can contain one or more resources and it'll bring you back again the name of the resource, the type of the resource, the location of the resource which could be useful um, and then the ID of the resource. Now the ID of the resource is probably going to be the most useful because inside there you can grab the resource group name and extract it out. And that's what we're going to do today. We're going to look up a key vault with no, uh, with nothing but the key vault name. Um, so let's get going. So I have my provider set up here. I have my code here set up. Um, I know that I have a key vault and I know what its name is. I'm going to save that in here for safekeeping. Then I'm going to go back to the documentation. I'm just going to grab one of these blocks and pump it in here. Now I'm going to change the input parameter to be the name. I'm going to pipe in my key vault name. I'm going to call this my key vault. And right off the bat, I'm just going to I'm just going to run this. Okay, we ran apply. It worked, but we didn't we have no, nothing to show for it. So I'm going to define an output just to grab something. So I'm going to output the um, key vault ID and of course this is an array I don't know if there's an item in this array but I'm pretty sure <laughs> so I'm I'm gonna in, I'm gonna grab the index zero because I know there's gonna be at least one ah and I'm not I'm not I gotta reference the resources block and there you go I got my key vault resource ID now let's see if we can do some fun stuff and grab the resource group Let's try this. My string manipulation may be incorrect, but we'll give it a go. Maybe I'm not using split properly. Ah, the separator goes first. I always, I always, I always mess that up. Separator goes first, which seems backwards to me. 
because I want to split something with this. I want to split something by something. But that's just the way that function is implemented. You'll probably run into that if you've ever written C Sharp or Java or something like that. That's my history. Um, that's not exactly the resource ID, is it? Um, that would be the subscription ID. So let's just uh, grab... That might be useful. So let's just grab that. Um, let's grab the resource group name. Which should be the same thing, but like maybe index 4, I'm guessing. Let's try that. And there we go. We got our resource group name and we got our... Um, subscription ID on um, by accident <laughs> um, now 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 that we have the resource group name we can actually use the key vault looker upper data source over here and there you have it we are now able to use a data source to look up our key vault um, we of course had to go grab the resource group name that was unknown to us um, theoretically, for this problem, um, using the Azure RM resources block. Um, and so, of course, this is not how I'd stru structure a project. Um, I would, you know, put all my outputs into outputs.tf, clean up my local variables, like this is a repeating constant, so I would extract that, layer a local. And uh, better yet, why, why even make it a local? Why not just make it a variable? Um, and then what I would likely do is instead of having that code in this module, I would just, um, re I would declare this module, pass in the resource name, grab the resource group out of this module, and then I would be off to the races. So again, this, I'm trying to create this module so that you can reuse it. Uh, going forward with any resource type, not just a key vault. Um, so we're removing any references to key vault here. The resource, the resource URI is going to have the exact same paths for the subscription ID and the resource group name, so you should be good there. Um, the, so this output is going to be the same. Um, this output, as long as there's a resource there, um, the resource group name will be the same. So all you have to do is pass in a resource name and you got it. So anyways, I hope you found this helpful. Um, this is uh, one of those resources that, uh, or one of those data sources within the provider that uh, you might stumble across, uh, but I wanted to draw your attention to it because it can be very useful, um, particularly in those scenarios where you're trying to reference existing resources that you may not know, exact, like you didn't provision yourself, and so you're gonna have to triangulate um, to, to find them. Um, using the name, the resource group name, uh, tags, which can be a great way to triangulate if you coordinate that across your organization, um, and uh, and type um, if you need it. But if you, if you get a name and you know the subscription, there's a good shot you're going to find that resource. Um, anyways, that's it for me for today from sunny Orlando, Florida. I hope uh, you're you're doing well wherever you are in the world. And uh, I'll see you soon here on Azure Terraformer, signing off.